Hello, my name is Elizabeth Ross. I am the media manager at SMARTS and the Research Institute for Learning and Development. If you're watching this video, it means that you'll be participating in our Learning Differences Conference. Now, because the conference is virtual this year, we are putting together this little kind of guide tutorial about how you can give the best possible Zoom presentation that you can give. Now, some of you are giving them live, some of them are recording them, so this is gonna be a kind of um, helpful for both of you. Now, we have also put this information in a text document in case you would rather get your information that way, um, but some people are visual and want to actually see how they can run a successful presentation actually uh, using the Zoom software. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to share my screen with you and we are going to go through um, various ways that uh, you can improve your presentation. Now, a lot of this information is going to be stuff that you already know. We've all gotten a big crash course on uh, in the recent few months about uh, how to give online presentations, but we wanted to make sure we were thorough and we covered a whole lot of information. Um, just for everybody who might need it. Okay, so we're going to divide this up into basically two big sections, what to do behind the camera and what to do in front of the camera. Now, these overlap a little bit, but it's a good idea, this is actually another little tip, is to separate your talk out into sections to make it easier to follow. Okay, so start off. We're talking about polish polishing your image. So we're going to talk about video sample, we're going to talk about Zoom, we're going to talk about your internet, sound, lighting, and background. All right, so first off, the video sample. We are asking all of our speakers to send us a short video clip before you actually record your talk or even before you present at the LD conference if you're doing it live. That way we can check out your video setup and help you troubleshoot any problems that come up before you go to the trouble of actually recording your whole talk and then there's a problem, we have to redo it. So. Think of us and me specifically as a resource. So I'm gonna go over a lot of higher level um, tips and tricks today, but if you have specific questions, you can contact us and um, people will put you in touch with me and I can actually give you individual help. I will also in the description of this webinar, I will put my contact info so you can reach me directly. Oh, okay, so next. Let's talk about um, computer and Zoom, all right? So Zoom um, is a great platform, but it does have its idiosyncrasies. So first off, update your computer software and your Zoom software. So Zoom is always putting out updates to improve their platform, but they don't always automatically update. So you have to manually go into the Zoom menu and click check for updates. Your computer is also uh, has often has software updates. The problem is when these two updates don't match, that can create some difficulty. So make sure that you download the new versions of both your operating system and Zoom. Now, my biggest, biggest uh, uh, recommendation is to restart your computer before you give your presentation. Even if you restarted your computer the night before, it's good to start fresh. 99% uh, of the problems that happen with Zoom can be solved by just restarting your computer. So it's a good idea just to do it to begin with, and then you don't have to go back. Um, even there are some uh, computer operating systems that for some reason Zoom just won't show a camera on until you restart. So that's my recommendation for that. Uh, next, close all unnecessary programs and tabs. So the thing with Zoom is that it uh, sucks up a lot of your computer's memory. So you could be rehearsing your presentation, using PowerPoint, using all sorts of programs, it works great. But then you add Zoom and that extra load on your computer can make things run kind of slowly. So it's a good idea to just close everything else on your computer that you don't need. So that includes tabs on your internet browser and all sorts of other things. It'll just make things run smoothly. Okay, so your on-screen Zoom name. Now everybody has an on-screen Zoom name. However, this is just make sure that before uh, you actually start recording or you actually start broadcasting that you go in and you make sure that the name's the one that is on Zoom is the one you want everyone to see. I know a lot of people have kids who are sharing their Zooms and they change the names back and forth. You want to make sure that you have your complete professional name on a Zoom for the very beginning. Now, 
virtual background, this is, a, is an interesting subject, a bit of a gray area, because Zoom backgrounds can look great. They can also look not so great. And we don't have a hard and fast recommendation on this. It depends on your camera. It depends on your lighting and your background. Some people's cameras are very, very good at doing a virtual background, background some are not. So sometimes they can look very patchy. Uh, if you don't have adequate lighting, if your background, your, your actual physical background is uh, not close to all the same color, that sort of thing. My blanket recommendation is if you can get a nice background in your actual house, don't use a virtual background. It just makes things look a little bit cleaner. However, um, we'll talk a little bit more about backgrounds as we go through, but I did want to touch on virtual backgrounds initially. If you do end up using a virtual background, um, I am going to actually stop my screen share for just one moment so I can actually show you one. If you do end up using a virtual background um, and on Zoom, choose one um, that is professional, that uh, looks fairly natural. It's okay if people know that's not actually your background, but you don't want something that's kind of wild and crazy. Also, I have found that various backgrounds even though they should look nice when I try them, sometimes they don't. So it's a good idea to try them ahead of time. So this is a sort of good example if you do want to use a virtual background. Um, but like I say, it's really uh, not necessary and I don't always think advisable, but that is, that is my personal recommendation there. Okay, let's go back to where we were before. Go back to screen share, great. Um, all right. Now let's talk about screen sharing. Okay, so most of you I'm sure will be doing presentations with a PowerPoint, so that means you will be screen sharing. And screen sharing is a great tool, but uh, it can trip people up sometimes. So my uh, recommendation is to, first off, you want to make sure that you know how your screen sharing works, okay? So uh, this is a little screen, uh, screenshot that I did when I was about to start screen sharing so we can actually see what uh, we're looking at here. Um, an advanced Zoom feature, which I won't be going into today, is the annotate feature on Zoom. And I honestly love it. But um, uh, that is something that also is a, is a great, is a great thing that you can use on Zoom. Um, but again, I'm not going to go into that today, but if you want to know a little bit more about that, it's a great way for you to direct people's eye on still images. But first off, so if you look down at the bottom of this screen, there is the uh, under, under my face, um, is a green button that is the share screen button. So that is going to be the same on every single person's Zoom. Uh, so if you click that, that will start the screen sharing process. So then the next thing you're going to do is when you hit that button, this sort of screen will pop up. It'll be a little different because it'll be on your computer, but you'll see this white screen where you have various options for screen sharing. So the first one that is in blue right there is desktop. That will screen share your entire desktop, not just a singular program. Usually people don't want to do that. They just want to share their PowerPoint or an image or something like that. So you have to um, select which window you actually want to share. If you want to share your whole desktop, great. Pick that one and hit the blue share button that is at the lower right-hand corner of that screen. However, if you want to just share a PowerPoint, you have to have that PowerPoint open and up on your screen. It has to be, uh, it can't be minimized because Zoom can't see it that way. If you have it open and it's not, minimi it's not minimized, uh, it'll come up as an option. So if you see um, at the bottom, uh, there, there is an option for Google Chrome presentation that's under the blue box there. That is the one I actually want. So I would click that. That would be my presentation. I would hit share and then I would be screen sharing. So easy enough. So that's the basics there. Again, you can contact me if you need actually more uh, information on that. Um, I will be your tech support generally throughout the conference. This is just sort of extra information. Um, there'll be somebody, probably me, maybe another person who will actually, if you're doing a live presentation, we will be on during your live presentation as your tech support to help you out, to help you deal with audience, you will have a lot of support. So it's just sort of a side note. Okay, here we go. Um, so 
Now, uh, this is my final uh, little neat tip and trick. It's not necessary, but I think it is really great, is uh, keyboard shortcuts. So on uh, the Zoom screen, there's a little button that you can click with your mouse that says stop video, says mute, unmute, but you don't have to use your mouse to do that. You can use a keyboard shortcut. That can be a lot easier than kind of fumbling around with the mouse to try to actually hit the right button on your screen. So um, this is something that if you open up the Zoom preferences settings um, in uh, when you have Zoom open, then you can uh, you can see these. So the uh, the ones that it comes with, if you want to put your audio on and off with your key keys, you have the shift key, the control key, and then the A that turns your audio on or off. And for video, it's shift control V. However, you can remap those to whatever you want. So I, that's a lot of buttons for me to press. So I remapped mine, my audio to option A because I found that easy to use. So if you go into preferences and you click um, on those, it'll give you the option to remap them. So that is like a cool, that, that's an advanced skill, but I know that that can make juggling a lot of different things a little easier for people. Oh, okay, next. All right, internet. This is extremely important. You need a good internet signal. All right, now I know you can't necessarily control that perfectly. However, a few recommendations. You need to test in your house um, where you uh, have the best Wi-Fi signal. This is true whether you're recording or presenting live. So everybody has various different places in their houses that have better signal or not. So bring your computer around and check those things. If you can be wired as opposed to using Wi-Fi, do that. It's definitely gonna give you a better signal. It's not gonna make things as slow. You won't get dropped out. If you can use wired internet, do that instead of Wi-Fi. That being said, some people who have spotty internet have found that if they restart their Wi-Fi router before actually doing their presentation, um, that that can make it work a little bit better, but that's a, that's a little individual. So make sure you double check that to begin with. Okay, all right, let's talk about sound. So everybody focuses on the picture when it comes to doing these types of presentations, but we have found that sound is the most important thing. If there's bad sound, it really makes it hard for people to concentrate as opposed to, you know, bad visuals. Uh, people are actually surprisingly, uh, lenient about that. So first off, put your cell phone on mute. Mute anything in your house that makes noise while you're in the middle of doing your presentation. That's simple, but honestly, it's easy to forget. So I always try to make a note on it when I'm going through and I'm doing a checklist of everything that I need to do before a presentation. Um, now, air conditioning. So it's extremely hot right now, uh, but air conditioning can make a lot of sound um, in a house. So this is an individual thing. Some people's air conditioners are very quiet. No problem. Have it on while you're recording. That's fine. But a lot of times they can be very loud or they can come in and out while you're recording. So you might need to turn your air conditioning off when you record. You should test ahead of time. Um, mute your computer sounds. So um, a lot of people get a sound every time they get an email. So when you're recording or presenting, if you're getting that and you have your email open, as we usually, most of us do, you're gonna keep getting bing, bing, bing sound. So that is something you want to shut off before you actually begin recording, okay? Um, and that can be true of anything that makes sound on, sound on your computer. So find a quiet places to present. So again, this is simple, but it's something worth saying. There's so many of us, we're all home right now. A lot of people who have children who are home now too, and it can be very hard to find a quiet space. So you wanna find a place where you know you won't be disturbed, where you're not gonna have uh, family members coming in. Just uh, do a little prep work and try to find that. Um, keep uh, your computer volume as quiet as possible to avoid echo. So this is one of the, you know, the interesting things with Zoom is that you, um, often need to hear what you're saying and make sure that your, your uh, mic is on. But um, if you're getting sounds coming back from your computer, that they will go back into your microphone and you can get a kind of feedback. 
situation. This happens much more if you have multiple present presenters who are doing things at the same time. So if you're a single presenter, you're probably fine. But if you have multiple people who are talking on a Zoom, this can happen. So you want to have your volume up loud enough so you can hear your other presenters, but not so loud that it feeds back. If this is a problem, you can also use headphones. That really cuts it out almost entirely. Um, and that's what we we're saying. You can use headphones if you like. If you can get away with not using headphones, um, I like to not use headphones or at least to use like earbuds, something that's small. But if you, it's better to use headphones than have something weird and echoey. All right, next. Okay, so let's talk about lighting, white balance, and background. So this is the stuff that isn't Zoom specific um, and is, but it's still sort of behind the camera. Okay, lighting. So you want to make sure you have good lighting. There's basically not a thing, uh, such thing as too much lighting. So you're going to want to, again, take your camera around, uh, or your webcam around your house and try to find the best types of lighting. So first off, camera angle. Um, you want to make sure that the camera lens is sort of at eye line with you. You don't want it below you because then that's when you get the up nose shot. So that's not great. Um, and you don't want it so far above you because that just looks kind of unnatural. If you have it built into your laptop, this is pretty easy. But if you're using a phone or if you have another webcam, that makes this a lot harder. So you want to get eye line, okay? Um, so you need more light, but you also need to have a sort of even amount of light. You don't want to have light that is just in front of you and then have it all black in the background because that gives a kind of weird ghostly effect on your face. You also don't want to have a ton of light in your background and then not as much on your face because then you get a weird sort of silhouette. So you, want, you don't want either of these examples that I have here. The other thing is white balance. So white balance is, uh, it's interesting, cameras don't actually know what the color white is. So you have to tell them what the color white is and then from that they extrapolate all the other tones of color. So if you get a, if your video is very blue, that means your white balance is off. So this can be something that you can sometimes fix by going into the webcam um, settings, either uh, in your computer or if you have an external webcam. However, here is a neat tip and trick is that a quick and dirty way to rebalance your, your white balance is to take any piece of white paper and just pop it in front of your camera lens so that you can't see anything else. And that will kind of recenter and tell your camera, this is white, all right? So it doesn't always work, but it's really fast. And frankly, I've actually done that during your presentation, just been, pardon me, boop, no problem, done, it looks fine. So there's a cool little tip and trick. Okay, so the direction of the light. This is basically what we're saying before. Natural light is great and getting and being near a window is a good idea. But again, you don't want to have something so bright right behind you because then it puts the whole rest of your face in shadow. You need even light. Um, this is very hard to explain. This is why we're doing so many pictures. Okay, so another thing is direction of light and diffusion. So, uh, I am not a fan of fluorescent lights. We don't always have the option. If you're in an office with fluorescent lights, it's better to use them than things be dark. But if you have light that's coming, especially from fluorescent lights, right from above, it hits the top of your head um, and then sort of shadows everything down your face. And for those of us who are a little follically challenged, that can give like a bright, bright spot right on the forehead. Sometimes it is better to be using um, instead of turning, it's better to turn off overhead lights and to get more surrounding light. The best possible thing is to have two lights, one coming at 45 degrees angles this way and the other coming like this. We're going to talk a little bit more about how to achieve that with things you have in your home. Um, but desk lamps are really good for this, standing lamps, that type of thing. So you just kind of have to mess around with it, play around with it uh, in your house. Okay. Um, lighting diffusion, the wax paper hack. So this is, this is, I love this hack um, a lot. So um, a way that I'm using it right now, so I will actually show you my setup here, is that I have overhead lights in this room that I'm filming in, but they are not strong enough. So I have brought in a desk lamp that I use to sort of fill in the shadows. So right now I am going to stop screen sharing and we'll go right back to this. Okay. So uh, I am going to turn off my light. So you can see it's fine, but I got all the shadow right here. Some shadow is okay. 
but um, it's nice to have a little bit more than right here. So I brought a desk lamp to do that. However, most of the time, a desk lamp will give you light that is way too harsh, especially if it's sort of close to you. So for instance, this is the way my lamp looks normally. It's fine, but it's a little bit bright. So what I do here, pardon me, is um, I have a desk lamp and then I just tape a piece of paper towel over it and it just gives the light a little refraction, a little diffusion. It gives it this nice soft lighting look. I get nice even lighting and nothing is too harsh. So this works like gangbusters. So uh, I really, really recommend this as a great lighting solution. That way you don't have to uh, worry about being beholden to the natural light that is in your house. Okay, so that's, that's, that's one of my most favorite tips. Okay, here we go. So uh, this is basically the uh, same type of thing. I use a paper towel. You can also use a, a piece of paper folded over. It depends on how uh, bright your light is. Okay, great. Background, this is a particular pet peeve of mine. You want to check your corners. You don't want it to be cluttered. Okay, so now the same woman we've been looking at, her lighting is great, but look at all of that clutter around uh, on the first picture to the left um, that is all around her. There's, uh, there's trash and animals and uh, stuffed animals and all sorts of things. So you wanna make sure that you're in a place that has kind of clean background. Now the second picture here, I love it. It's a study, it's got lots of nice wood and books. So I say texture, not clutter. Because honestly, we'll talk a little bit. A blank white wall is not a terrible place to record, but it's boring. Having something with a little visual interest, but not too much visual interest is a good idea. It's actually why I like my little background here, because it's a nice neutral color. It has a little bit of texture, but nothing about it is distracting. So that's something to look for. Okay, so background, uh, white and color and clothing. So again, if you have a blank white wall, that's fine for recording, but it's kind of visually uninteresting. And that type of off-white that most of our walls are can be a, it can be an unflattering uh, color to have for most people's skin tone. It's fine, but if you have a colored wall behind you, that is ideal. That's wonderful. In fact, something I love is a gray wall behind you. Um, and that's something, even if you happen to have a painted gray wall, wonderful. But honestly, uh, what I have done in the past is I have just gotten some gray poster board and put it on a wall behind me. I've gone done gray fabric. Um, and or even you, if you want to go for it, you can get sort of gray backdrops, pin them up behind you. They can really uh, make you look good. Light bounces, bounces off of them well. It's good for a lot of skin tones. The other thing you want to think about is when you're talking about clothing, you want your clothing to uh, set you apart from the background, but also not to draw the eye. So I recommend either solid colored clothing um, or something with maybe just a light pattern, not too much. You don't want to um, draw attention, but also bright colors or very busy patterns can look weird on camera. They can look great in person, when you put them on camera, they look odd. So you want to just try this stuff out before you actually go ahead and record. Uh, same thing goes for like lots of big jewelry. Um, a little bit that isn't too distracting is, is very good. It makes you look very pro on video. But uh, you don't want to have something that reflects because that kind of lighting can be weird. Also, for those of you who wear glasses, I know I, I get questions from people that, oh, can I wear my glasses on screen? There's, it's reflecting. Uh, is that bad? It's fine. People understand about glasses. You, if you wear glasses, you need to wear them. I honestly find that nobody minds if there's some reflection in uh, the lenses of glasses, so don't worry about it. Okay, next. Let's talk about in front of the camera. Okay, so that's behind the camera. Let's talk about in front of the camera. Okay. So we're gonna talk about the first and last minute of your webinar, kind of toward the end. We're gonna talk about your webinar persona, your script, and then how to say everything. So this is the kind of performance aspect of uh, your webinar, all right? And this isn't specific to Zoom, but we just wanted to give you a few uh, tips and tricks that we've come up with. So um, the first beginning of your webinar or your presentation um, is to set the tone. Um, you wanna get this down at the very beginning. I would recommend you, uh, 
close to memorize this because it really sets you off right. After that, for the rest of your webinar, you can be pretty informal. I get questions from people, should I memorize my entire presentation? Um, and I'm like, no, I don't think so. You don't have to say everything word for word. That makes it very stiff and formal. But for the very beginning, it's a good idea. So make sure you want to introduce yourself to begin with. You want to make sure you say the name of your webinar. It's surprising how many people will do will start their webinar and not actually say the name of it. People will be going to a lot of different presentations, so you want to make sure that you tell them where they are. Um, and then you want to talk about, it's a good thing at the very beginning to talk about the problem you're addressing. Um, and then I like listing three things that they're going to learn. That helps people organize their thoughts and kind of organize their note taking. Of course, all of your, you are, you're all, you are all pros at doing presentations. So, um, uh, you know what your particular presentation needs. This is just a recommendation. Okay, next. All right. Um, same thing with the last minute of your webinar. So solid finish leaves people with a good impression of your entire presentation. So you want to restate your main points and give your sign off. You want to say who you are, maybe say the name of the webinar again. Um, and uh, that way it just sort of finishes strong. So if you have these two, the beginning minute, the end minute, really, really strong, then in the, in the middle, you can be more off the cuff. And again, it's more just about giving the audience a feeling of, uh, you know, uh, that they are in good hands. So you want to get that for the very beginning and to sort of end where everybody feels strong. That will give everybody a great impression of your presentation. Okay, so your webinar persona. So we're all home right now. Um, and uh, we, I know that I haven't gotten fully dolled up in business casual for work in quite some time, but when you're doing a webinar, you need to think um, about exactly what type of persona you want to go through. Um, I'm using the word webinar a lot. I mean presentation, uh, talk, what we are doing here. Um, so you can go super fresh, professional and get put on uh, your uh, business formal and make sure that you have a background that looks like an office or you can be extremely familiar and casual. So for us, we're kind of shooting for somewhere between professional and uh, sort of middle. So you wanna make sure that you are not in, uh, in a recliner or a bed, something like that, something that looks uh, fairly, fairly pro. Um, an office is a good idea. You can also be sort of uh, professional and familiar at the same time. So this doesn't have to be one or the other because if you look too professional, it can be very off-putting. So you want to be put together. You want to have a nice background. You want to uh, have your audience feel that you are in control, but you want to also want to be personable. Uh, so clothing, we, we, we pretty much covered clothing already. Um, so I'm actually going to go on to the next thing. Um, and we've already, already talked about that. Um, okay, to, so to script or not to script. So again, this is a question I have, uh, I get from a lot of people. So most of the time when people are giving a presentation, I basically say, if you're using a PowerPoint, you don't need to use a script. So I'm not using a script right here. I have just written myself bullet points. I know what I'm going to say with these. These are helpful to the audience for if they're taking notes and they know what they're doing, but you don't feel like you have to say every single word, okay? So we're gonna talk about all of these various things. So my, uh, what is something I love is post-it notes. So uh, something I'm gonna talk about in just a second is talking about the camera, okay? So the problem with having notes sometimes is that they can keep you from looking in the camera. So if you have your notes, let's just say on here, and you're looking down the whole time and you're reading, then your audience is gonna feel very disconnected to you. That's what's great about using a PowerPoint as well, is that you can be looking at the PowerPoint and usually your camera, if your camera's at eye level and you're looking at your PowerPoint, it'll be right below there. And then you're, you're very close to looking in the camera. So that makes it very personable. Another thing you can do is you can take post-it notes and you can put it around the edge of your laptop screen or your desktop screen. And you can put a lot of notes on there. That way you just look up a little bit to read your post-it note note notes and then you are basically almost looking into the camera can that make them make it a very intimate experience so this is a great little tip and trick that i use all the time 
multiple screens. Some people really prefer to use multiple screens. Of course, you don't need to do this at all, but um, you can have your Zoom screen up on one screen, and then if you use a secondary computer or you use a secondary monitor, you can have your notes up on there. It really depends on your type of presentation. I have actually seen people occasionally give great presentations by putting notes on their phones and then having their phone sort of stand up on the edge of their laptop so they can see the notes there, but the audience can't see them. So that's another option to think about. But it's individual, um, so it, it really depends on your setup. Okay, how to say it? A few. We're almost in the uh, in the the home stretch here. Um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about presentation. Voice, water. So that's what I'm getting low water right here. Um, it's if you're getting a presentation, your voice needs water. Um, you need to hydrate during your presentation. A lot of people feel like. Yes, but if I take a drink of water during my presentation, that will sort of break the flow or look unprofessional. It's fine. It's much better that you keep your voice in good shape, that you sound good throughout your webinar. So I recommend having some water nearby. All right, so eye contact. So we're going to talk about that right there. So um, this is something uh, that I basically just hit upon. We're going to talk about it really specifically. Eye contact. Look up. It feels unnatural, but to look like you're making eye contact with your audience, you want to look directly into the camera lens. And the camera lens, if you're using a laptop, is going to be up top at the sort of uh, top of the screen, and it's going to be dark. So it's easy to forget to do that. Um, if you're using a secondary webcam, same thing. I actually recommend that people put a little piece of tape, or again, or a post-it note, right next to their camera to, rec to remind them, look up, look into it as much as you possibly can. If you're using on-screen notes, uh, something I recommend is that you take your note, uh, your digital notes that you're using, and if so it's like, say you're using a PDF of notes, you don't fill your entire screen with them. I recommend you fill half your screen with it, and you put that window up near your uh, camera. That way you can read your notes, but you're actually looking pretty close to the actual camera. It's amazing how much of a difference this makes with audience engagement when they feel like they're, that you're actually looking at them, okay? Um, and actually, I'm gonna go back one second because I wanna make talk about posture and powder. Okay, so again, posture is a really, a really good idea to make sure that you're sitting up straight uh, that um, I actually recommend that if you are sitting down that you put a few pillows behind you. I have one right now. Keep you sort of standing up. Another thing I recommend, if at all possible, I recommend standing to deliver your presentation. I know it sounds a little bit weird because who can tell whether you're sitting or standing when you're on Zoom. However, standing automatically energizes your body. People, when they're doing a sitting down presentation, somehow their energy drops as they sit, they kind of curl in on themselves and they forget that they're presenting and you're actually being um, sort of like, if you were in a, a hall present, presenting this live, you would be standing up and you would pro be projecting to the back row. But when you're sitting, that can often not occur to you. So if you stand while you're doing your webinar, your, uh, your your lungs aren't as compressed, you can support your voice better, and it's automatically more energetic. This isn't necessary, but it's a cool little hack that really does work if your particular situation um, allows for it. The other thing to say is face powder. So <laughs> I know it's a strange thing to say, but um, honestly, on camera, especially when you're beginning a long presentation, it's very easy to sweat, especially when it is hot out like it is right now. Um, and so I recommend everybody puts on a little bit of face powder before you record or before you give your presentation. It can just calm down the shininess. It's simple and it's an easy thing that works. Okay, so we have come to the end of this presentation. Thank you uh, all very much. Again, I am Elizabeth Ross. I am the Smarts Media Manager, and I will be helping at the uh, Learning Differences virtual conference for the Research Institute for Learning and Development. I will be your tech support. So this is just a, we thought it would be a good idea to put together these sort of helpful tips and tricks 
That being said, you can also contact us if you have any more specific questions. Make sure to send us a little video sample um, as soon as you can so we can double check and uh, make sure that we fix any issues before you actually go ahead and record your entire session. Um, and that also, if you are doing a live session, um, either myself, probably me, or another one of our staff members will be on there um, doing all of the kind of back end tech support and uh, wrangling the audience, things like that. So please do reach out um, if you have any questions. All right. Thank you so much and uh, have a good day. Bye.